Well, after I showed you uh, my half moon um, lawn last week, backyard, the couple of people came and asked me what happened after that. So, so I, I, you've already seen that. I, I did it. Um, and uh, we had um, the a visitor on Tuesdays and Wednesday, and um, one of our um, 9 a.m. the church members who are my neighbors, they just live around the corner from our new house in White Tower. They actually came to offer us to use their own uh, lawn mower after they saw that picture, and they also brought lovely um, Anzac biscuits. Uh, we really enjoyed that, um, and that's what I did my day off. So ministers not just doing nothing, um, they doing, we're doing something on our day of, or maybe another picture is comparing, um, <laughs> you know, those <laughs> weight loss kind of. Um, <laughs> Over the last two weeks, we thought about the question, why the neighborhood matters? Does neighborhood matter? And we've learned new concept about placement, placemaker, placemaker last week. And this week, we will explore the question how we can understand better, how we can understand better our community to become, for us to become effective placemakers. The Queensland Synod developed this program called uh, STAT, Statistics, Stats Have Faces. This program to help local congregations build better understanding of their community and to engage more effectively in mission in their neighborhood. And sometimes we don't really know. We don't really know as much about our own communities as we think we do. Sometimes what we once know is long, long, no longer the case. All agencies and service and care providers, they are encouraged to carry out research in relation to their local community. Churches, we should be no different. While communities might share similarities such as schools, shops, and sporting facilities, each one is unique with its own character and potential. Basis of Union, our foundation document says, Uniting Church stands in relation to contemporary societies in, which, in ways which will help it understand its own nature and mission. So the more, the more we understand our community, the more we understand those that live in them and their needs, the better we can serve God in being effective in mission. And you may wonder, you may wonder why I have chosen those two readings this morning, which Barbara uh, read it for us. And those two readings, they are actually two Bible readings from this Bible study from that um, stats have faces that material. Statistics plays an important role in the history of the Old Testament. Our first reading, Book of Numbers, is named after two counting, two countings of people of Israel. The Israelite community, they they were preparing for a long journey through the wilderness to the land of Canaan. Now God said to Moses that take census of all congregation of the children of Israel by their families, by their fathers' houses. God wanted count made by the families because the strength of Israel was it determined by the looking at the strength of the individual families? Our gospel reading from Luke, that suggests accurate numbers are necessary for informed decision. In this parable of tower, Jesus said, you sit down and see if you can afford to follow me. We all need this kind of planning. We all need this kind of preparation process. We church can use statistics, mathematics, and measurement information. Discerning what God is up to in our neighborhood is not so much about skills of knowledge, 
as about to as about to hear God together and discovering how we might join with what the Spirit is already doing in our community. So what information? What information is would, it, would be helpful in assisting our congregation to join with what the Spirit is already doing in our community? Well, I think there are some information available, um, perhaps local uh, council website, that might be easiest one. This is a few um, statistics. Um, the demographic uh, information I found, the Korean guy, local council, something about the age structure, and you can compare that what Taramara is. Although it's, this is 2016, not too up to date, but you, you can see that next one, it's about religion and how we sit in the other um, religion, how many uniting church, um, Christian, and perhaps next one, it's more about uh, between Anglican, uniting church, um, other denomination, how many, particularly, we are in Taramara, perhaps compared to 2011. And I read this um, profile quite um, carefully as I was having that interview um, some month ago that I wanted to find out where we are. There's another um, religion that uh, information, the Kringwai local council website. And there can be two quite simple exercises, something I want to introduce today, two quite simple exercises you can explore to have better understanding of your local community. First one is in my title, exegetical work. And you may be familiar with this word, exegesis. This word, it, this literally means critical interpretation. And this word is commonly applied to a study of literature. As the readers of the Bible, we exegete the text with the view of discerning its truth for our lives. In this exercise, you are, you are invited to undertake exegesis of your neighborhood, as if you read your neighborhood as we read the Bible. It is about reading your neighborhood as one of the primary texts of daily life. So before you head out for your work, for daily work in the park or somewhere, think about how you define your neighborhood. Where is the definition of your neighborhood? How it physically laid out. So draw yourself a map, including your home, basic street patterns and landmark shops and commercial or community building, schools and parks. And once you have a rough idea what area to include, just grab your notebook and pen and head out. And be sure, make sure you include time to stop, have a drink, sit in the park, and the bus stop. Don't just look at your surroundings, but take note of your uh, feelings and reactions at every moment. And there might be the question you might want to ask each journey you take. Where are the places of life, hope, beauty, or community in this neighborhood? In what ways do you sense God's presence where you live? Do you pass any churches? Do you pass any buildings? What does their design or appearance communi communicate to you? Second tool that I wanted to introduce is called community asset mapping. You might pr probably remember something I mentioned um, last week. Asset mapping. It is a positive, focused way of celebrating community, celebrating community resources, and connecting individual organizations and spaces for collaboration, empowerment, and support. In this process, you work out who are the key people, who are the key people in, our, in your community, what are the key places in our community so that we can see how we can partner with them. It is also a way of identifying the, identifying the strength of our community. There are a couple of um, examples I found. Um, you can see as a whole map, there's a particular area you can trace. 
and write it down. And there's another one, um, community asset. There's a physical asset. You can write it down, institutional, local economy, cultures and stories, and individual. This is um, a bit of exercise. We did this course um, in Surrey Hills. We have different categories, and we write down what's in there and think about how we can partner with those different groups. So for example, um, the, your task is research five cultural artifacts, five cultural places in your neighborhood. Let's imagine. And they can be stories, places, and spaces. Consider the building environment or the history of background neighborhood, key people or myth that exist there or places that are important. The building, transport, boundaries, the way people travel, where people gather, and other factors considered in this exercise. Your task is to observe and analyze the culture of your neighborhood as you go and visit these five places that are core to your community. And simply like that, draw a map, map the culture, based on what you have learned in this lesson. And as you reflect on, now make some uh, reflection about what you have learned about your neighborhood through this exegesis, what stand out to you. In your journey, also write down answers to the question. If you live here, how would embody and proclaim the gospel? Well, these two examples, they are rather quite simple. Perhaps this is exercise you do every day. But it can change. It can bring real change, our view towards our neighbor and our understanding for our community. So I encourage you to exercise this in your free time, as I will do too, as I will learn about my new community, learn about new people and streets as I walk out in the uh, coming month. Barbara mentioned I'm using Peterson at the beginning. I have uh, some quotes. Um, he paraphrased of John 1.14, which is very famous verse for everyone. He said, and the word, word became uh, fresh and moved into neighborhood. Moved into neighborhood. Society has changed in a great deal. People are more mobile than ever before, and we live in an age of incredible opportunity for the communication and connection, which is great. But this is also time it should be possible to feel increasingly that we belong to community. There are many people in our neighborhood who struggle with isolation and despair. As a church and individual, we are in a unique position to help build stronger communities. And our role, role of a church is not to rescue people from the world, but to be, be the church embedded in the world, helping to transform it. Historically, church was always, has always been local, taking place in neighborhoods and people's homes. Jesus was present, ministering to his neighborhood and much of his own mission was carried out in his local community, in people's homes, in marketplaces, and on the street. He met people in the midst of the most ordinary task, drawing water from the well in their workplaces, over the meal, and a family wedding. And we need, we need to constantly attune ourselves to recognize God's presence in the ordinaries of our neighborhood. The neighborhood is holy ground, and it is sacred. So encounter it with reverence and view it as holy. Um, last week's um, online service, uh, John Humphrey, uh, you all know him, uh, perhaps I, you know him more than I know him, um, he writes a um, lovely prayer in the comment section, and I often read his prayer in his uh, Facebook, and I said, wow, I'd, rather, I'd like to uh, write one of those 
pray in my Facebook. I read it as I finish this message. Blessed are they when space is created for people to be in relationship. Blessed are they when the room is made for love to live. Blessed are they when the business of life is pushed and people can meet to live out their faith in work for good. Blessed are they when the place is never as important as purpose. Blessed are we when we are place makers. Blessed we pray to be. Amen.